If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Downfall Network for more cool content. What's up, everyone? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm McCrock Nick. I'm Jamin John. I'm Shred Lord. And we're back here with an album review. So, actually, kind of a relatively surprising one. Behemoth put out a new EP, simply called A Forest. Now, this came out on Metal Blade Records, and, I mean, going to a little bit about Behemoth, most people know who they are by now. Born in Poland in 1991, and pretty much the most recognizable black and death metal band out there, I'd say. I've seen them multiple times, Killer Live Act, and they've written some incredible albums in their time. And they came back and uh, did something a little bit experimental here. <laughs> And this is their eighth EP overall. These guys have a ton of releases if you ever look at their metal and releases, including demos and splits, and of course on their full lengths. This is pretty much built around one cover. They decided to cover The Cure's A Forest. And they did two versions on here, both a studio version and a live recording. And well, we're just going to go over every track on here since it's only four tracks long. There are two new originals on here and then the two versions of the cover. So, starting off with the studio version of the cover, well, first off, they bring in uh, Nicholas Kvarforth. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. If not, sorry, it up. He is the front man of Shining, well-noted Swedish black metal band. And uh, <laughs> apparently they brought him in to wheeze and moan. And make pterodactyl noises. He, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's a good pterodactyl impressionist, that's for sure. I so, don't understand why they went with this vocal approach. It I'm, sounds like a rejected Muppet with COPD. Dude, it, it's just endless wheezing. I was just waiting for him to go, I'm sorry, sweetie, I just don't have it in me right now. I'm done. <laughs> it's, you know, all right. Honestly, like, I like The Cure. I love The Cure. They were a big part of my 80s upbringing. Agreed. And this song needed a little bit more melody, at least, in the vocals for me. Like, musically, I thought they did a really good job. It was a pretty good reimagining. Solid musically. I like the, like, tremolo melodies. They pretty much took out of the regular melodies that were in there. And overall, it kind of works as a metal song. But vocally, they just took any sort of hook out of it. And I just kind of hard to get into, really. Yeah, the, the vocals definitely ruined the song for me. Yeah, dude. It's, on, uh, it's bad. On a, on a grandiosa level. Being also a, a fan of The Cure, one of the great things that when we were having this discussion earlier uh, about The Cure is is Robert Smith's ability to create a good hook, and the vocals uh, in their approach took away any kind of a hook at all. <laughs> and like Robert Smith can emote with those clean vocals really well, and that really doesn't get much of a sense of emoting anything other than I can't breathe on on this. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just, it just sounds so dry, and, and it really can't tell where Nurgle comes in and Nicholas drops out, or whether it's Nicholas carrying the it's, entire song. It's bad. And they have released a music video for this as well, uh, which we checked out earlier, and I mean, not like music videos always make sense, right? But this one was really fun. And weird. It's like know. Nurgle out in the forest, like stalking the dude from Shining, and he's fucking crying all over the place. And then some bitch shows up with a pair of lungs and just smashes him on a rock. And the dude <laughs> from Shining's all fucking crying on the floor, and then that's it. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And they're, they're wearing tree branches and like yeah. shrouds, yeah. and I don't know, maybe that was his favorite rock. Maybe that was his favorite. He didn't want to get blood on it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know the narrative behind this video, but it's weird. And, you know, far be it for, you know, Behemoth's videos to not be weird, but this yeah, one I want them to didn't be weird, have, like, a... I don't know what the this, narrative was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was exceptionally odd. And I hate saying it, because I'll probably get some shit for it, but honestly, I think Ghost could have done a better job on this. Now, namely because Ghost is more of a pop rock band with like and, a sort of a dark tinge to it. That's kind of what the and, Cure were anyway. And, and they can actually sing. Ghost can sing. Tobias Forge can sing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, the live version, I think, is a bit better, namely because I miss live shows, and it's good hearing the cheers, and I everyone miss. going, oi, oi. There was only, like, four cheers at the end. Let's be <laughs> yeah. honest. There wasn't a lot of claps. There, there was, and, there was, long. and was I don't like, know if that was studio noise pumping. It was like a half-assed, like, golf clap. There was, like, four people clapping at the end and they were all was, waiting yeah. for a different song it was like all right now you mm -hmm. just 
play a cooler song like, you know, Fire in the Void? Is that on the list? Can, can you play anything off the Satanist, please? <laughs> just anything. Anything. You just fart in this microphone. It'll be better. I ain't farting on no snare drum, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think the live mix is actually pretty good. I think they did a pretty decent job with that. But, yeah, it's it's the same song, and it's still not great. And the vocal performance, while better, still, again, not great. Bad. <laughs> this could have been miles, miles better had it had a different vocal approach. Yeah. I mean, I mean honestly, it, you know, I, there were points there where I was looking at the speaker like, you all right, buddy? <laughs> like, this, uh, this dude sounds like he's having an asthma attack. Now, we get to the two... Other original tracks on here, Shadows of Ia Cast Upon Golgotha, which is a mouthy title for a very simple song, really. It's kind of like a Motorhead-like D-beat that carries it, and it kind of has like a bit of a thrashy feel, but it feels kind of slapped together. It's really just kind of built on a few signature parts. There's two, yeah, to me there was about two main riffs, and it definitely had a not a very behemoth feel to it. Yeah. yeah. Like it had that more of the the punk hard rock feel uh, in the drums and in the in the songwriting, and they kept reusing these two parts kind of over and over and over again, which we got. And then at the end, they just slapped on like some classic Behemoth for like thirty yeah. seconds yeah, 30, and cut about, the track. About three minutes and thirty seconds into the track, and it's only a four minute and some change track. It sounds like Behemoth, but even then, it sounds like a really straightforward, stripped down Behemoth. See, you know, when that blast section came in, like that uh, blackened section, I thought it was like a bridge. I was like, okay, we're going to use this, kind of build with it, you know, toy it around, and then bring back to that main riff, because at least that would feel like a complete song. This doesn't even feel like a complete song. So it just ends right there. And then we go into the last track of O, which honestly sounds the most like Behemoth. There are some really cool blackened death metal parts. Until it doesn't sound like Behemoth. Until and there's, like, this breakdown. Yep. And then, and then, but no, wait, just kidding, it's Behemoth. No, just kidding, it's not. <laughs> it, it just, I don't understand, like, the main focus uh, in terms of, like, a chorus on the song is this really just kind of vanilla breakdown with a really light strummed part, and there's just no impact behind it. Then when you get down to the verses again, it's fiery again. It sounds like Behemoth again. Blast beats come in. There's big epic riffs. And then it just gets back to that watered-down chorus. And, like, the chorus is something you build a song around. Like, you want that big, epic, you know, fist-pumping moment. Yeah. yeah, right. And that did nothing to, like, really inspire me. Like, this doesn't even feel very put together. So, I mean, overall, this is just kind of a their EP. Like, I mean, if you're a completionist, you want to get every EP, every studio album, even the demos... You know, I mean, I suppose this is a necessary one. For me, this is not much of a hype job for a future release, which generally that's how I see EPs, is like, this is a tease for what's coming. And most of the time, we run into really good EPs, but they are just teasers, and this does not really instill a lot of confidence for the next release. I mean, I'll probably still get it, and we'll probably still review it, but I'm kind of wondering what the direction is going to be on this next album. So overall, I'm going to give this two stars. A couple of moments on here I thought were good, and I think the cover had potential to be really good, but a misfire, big misfire. I'm gonna give it one and a half. Ooh. Dude, pass. Ooh. It's not behemoth. I mean, it is, but it's really not. I can count on one hand the amount of times that this sounded like it had potential to be a behemoth song, and it didn't. It just kind of fell by the wayside. You know, I can't fault a band for trying new things and trying to incorporate some different things uh, into the mix. However, it in this case, it just didn't work. And once again, we'll still get the album. We're still fans of Behemoth. We're yeah. still gonna sure, check yeah. it out. Oh, yeah. I'm not uh, saying that at all. Behemoth fucking rules. Yeah, but this yeah. EP, like Necrotic said, doesn't instill a lot of confidence in us that the album, once it's released, is going to be something that we're going to enjoy. However- I hope it is. Even yeah, though I, is uh, I give it two stars, and even though I gave it two stars, and it's not something that I'm probably ever going to listen to again or listen to often, it's still better than Into the Pandemonium. So, fuck all you haters from the Celtic Cross <laughs> review who got all the, oh, you didn't like Into the Pandemonium. <laughs> Poop sauce. Oh, you didn't like it? <laughs> <laughs> Big 
Dude, you like the Cold Lake, man. You shouldn't be giggling. <laughs> That's a good album. But on a non-troll note here, if you like what you saw here, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're new to the channel, definitely hit the like and subscribe button because we do shit like this all, all the, the time. time. Catch you guys later. Peace.